it comes down to priorities. Let's jump into it. You are now in the cut with your boy, Keith Jefferson. Yo, what's good, fam? This is God's Bad Boy coming back at you with another episode of In The Cut. Thank you for tuning in. This is where we get down and dirty and uncut about all things related to Christ, and we putting it in your lap. Look here. Now, I know that COVID has set in and changed a lot of things, especially with how we worship and how we do business. But we see things have opened up, and this is not anything new. I think you can say by um, middle part of the summer, maybe even early summer, we saw things begin to open up and people start doing things as normal with certain precautions and whatnot. And I was thankful for it. Uh, I know in June at my church, we decided to open the doors back up But we had a real good plan. I must hand it to the planning committee that how they plan to do things was excellent. Uh, We have services on Saturday and Sunday. We use three facilities. Uh, We use our fellowship hall. We use the sanctuary and we use the gym in order to spread out and social distance. The deacon staff and the usher staff does a real good job in making sure that we adhere to that when we attend services. So overall, It's been a good experience. Um, Not too long ago, we opened up our life group where we're doing the same protocols, you know, social distancing and everything that is recommended by the CDC we're doing in our church. And I understand that some churches may not be able to do what it is that we're doing, but some are doing the best that they can. But it's good that we're having an opportunity to do things on social media by way of Zoom, StreamYard and other streaming services in order to get the message across. But for me, and it turns out that it's not just only me, there's a number of people who enjoy the fellowship. And I must say, I enjoy the fellowship of the saints. As a matter of fact, if we look at Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 to 25, it tells us never to forsake the assembling together. Because this is where we encourage and build one another up. I know I had opportunity to listen to Reverend, the Reverend Dr. Eric Mason. And um, he was talking about, in this particular video, he was talking about being attached to a church and being accountable. And I do believe accountability is a huge thing. I mean, we can look at Acts and we see nothing but accountability in the first century church. Matter of fact, if we take a look at Acts 2 and 42nd verse, and it says, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And this works hand in hand with Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, because it is very specific about us meeting and coming together in order to not only just uh, worship God, to pray together, but also to support each other and to help build one another up. Now, I know for some people, you know, social distancing is, is a huge thing, and that's understandable. Some folks have pre-existing conditions. As a matter of fact, I have pre-existing conditions. But for me, I try to be as obedient to the word as I can. I strive every day to be obedient to the word and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And while I'm going with this, once things start opening up, well, let's let's even talk before then, even before things start opening up, what was considered essential services. And this is what kind of got under my skin. It's the fact that you're going to label the liquor store an essential service, but yet you close down the churches. And in this process of closing down the churches, You saw depression go up. You saw suicide go up because whether certain people want to believe it or not, that the Lord is definitely needed in these times. However, there are some in the way of politics 
who disagree with the stance that the church takes on certain things, because for one, we, we, we're not accountable to the flesh. We're not accountable. Our ultimate accountability is to the Lord Jesus Christ. So some politicians can't take that, that that's where our ultimate accountability lies for whatever reason. Some believe, some half believe, some pretend to believe. So when we stick by our guns and say, this is whom we going to serve, some people have a problem with it. But there's consequences. There's consequences for denying the Lord's position, denying who he is. Only thing you have to do is read Romans 1. And it tells you that you know what the truth is. And I'm paraphrasing. You know what the truth is, but you harden your heart to it. You exchange the truth for a lie. You exchange the creator for things that were created. And you started to honor them, not the Lord our God. But what he do? He did this him. He handed you over to a reprobate mind. And I'm telling you, when you hand it over to your own devices, that's a sure path of destruction. But I digress. The thing that when we look at Hebrews 10, 24, 25, or either Acts 2 from 42, we see that the opportunity to meet is important on our walk of sanctification because the walk of sanctification. Well, let me let me back up for a minute. The thing of salvation is personal, but yet is corporate. Let me say this one more time. Salvation is individual but yet it is corporate. And the reason I'm saying it's corporate is because when we look at these pieces of scripture, it is telling us that we should have a habit of encouraging one another. Because sometimes in our path, when we're doing our thing, when we're making sure that we're serving God as we're supposed to serve him, that sometimes we need encouragement. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're preacher, teacher, deacon, usher, whomever, minister of music or whomever, or just a regular person in the pulpit. Everyone needs encouragement. That's just what it is. We are, as humans, we are communal, which means we thrive. We're supposed to be in a community setting. So when we isolate ourselves, especially isolate ourselves for people who serve the God that we serve, that uh, provides an opportunity to start, as some old folks say, backslide. And what the body does, we encourage each other, even through the most difficult times, when we're struggling with things at work, when we're struggling with our children, when we're having personal struggles with things like pornography, our foul language, our alcohol. We are supposed to confess our sins to one another. And in that, we're supposed to build each other up. But some of us are being inauthentic about who we say that we are. And we're allowing this COVID situation to give us an excuse not to do as the scriptures say. I know, I know everybody's a scientist. Well, the doctors say this, the doctors say that, and well, now, but here's the issue. You have no problem going to work. You had no problem taking your safety protocols and going to work for eight plus hours a day. You have no issue of going out doing your social activities with your friends and or family. You have no issue going out to Walmart or to the malls or the Home Depot, to the beautician, to the barbershop. You do all those things that you deem necessary, but it comes to priority. I don't care what state that we in. It comes down to priority. And you should love the Lord your God with all your heart soul, mind, and strength. And in that, we all should seek the kingdom and his righteousness. That's priority. I tell my daughter that all the time. I tell myself that all the time. Because when you prioritize God like he's supposed to be prioritized, everything in your life falls in order. And even in that, you got to look at the things in which you're blessed with. You're blessed with house and other material or wealth. You bless with your health and so forth and so on. But yet when it comes to prioritizing him, oh, I I, I got to do this. Oh, I, I, I can't do this because, you know, we, we got to use wisdom in this COVID thing. But yet you hanging out at a barbecue, right? Some of you out there trick or treating. And I'm like, Christians out trick or treating. Hmm. That's another story. Some of you out there with the protests that was going on throughout the summer. 
But when it comes down to let's go to the house and serve the Lord our God, then here come the excuses. People, it comes down to priority. It comes down to priority because you know what? I've been there before. I've been there when everything was more important than the Lord. And in that, I had to be humbled because he had to remind me of everything that he has done for me. And when I say he humbled me, he really did because I made everything about me, about what was comfortable for me. And there are times when the Lord calls you out or has an expectation that it's not going to be comfortable, but you still got to obey him. So I encourage, let's stop finding excuses not to serve, not to be obedient, not to be blessings to each other. Because when we look at verse 25 in Hebrews 10, it says, not forsaking our own assembling together. And the word in Greek is eposynagogi. And it means two things. It means meeting or assembling. That's it. So it's, it's very explicit in what it's saying that we're supposed to meet. And I understand that technology is here. Well, you know, it's new age now. You know, we can do this by Zoom. But let me let me tell you something. My grandfather always said he said you always do business in person because that is the best way for you to connect with somebody. Because it's personal. Zoom is fine. Whatever social media platform you use to get the message is fine. But remember, it's still impersonal. The best method for building a relationship is always face to face and personal. Because that's just how we operate. Again, we are a communal type being, which means we are made to be social with one another. And when we are using this technology As a sole way of communicating, I have to ask the question, are you really being held accountable? I mean, are you really being moved by the experience of being together on the same page, being a one mind as the body in Christ? I do Zoom. I also do in person. And I must say that I have greater joy when I'm doing my teaching and preaching in person because it is some about when the gathering of the saints are there and the spirit is active and moving so in closing i encourage you to reconsider to reprioritize your life and put christ number one i like how apostle paul put it he said imitate him as he imitates christ and all will be well with you if you are obedient to those words hope this has been a blessing to you fam have a great week Till we speak again, grace and peace. In the Cut is an independent podcast written, hosted, and produced by Keith A. Jefferson. If you would like to donate to the podcast, please send donations to dollar sign KJ Preach. 